Good morning. Uh, uh, I'm Evan Lancaster uh, with Door Village Church here, and uh, um, it's uh, great to be here this morning. Uh, get to see how this production actually uh, takes place. But uh, what I'd like to do on behalf of the uh, church and SPRC, and and a little different this year. We obviously didn't have a chance to uh, send an offering plate down the row uh, that we usually do to give thanks to uh, first. Uh, I'd like to have Pastor, Pastor Bob come up here. Um, and uh, again, on behalf of the church, we just want to give you this card, uh, a token basically of our appreciation for all you do for the church. And, uh, you know, you and Donna do a great job for us, so especially this crazy year we've had. Um, you know, I've had to really uh, be flexible in everything we've done this year and, and adapt, and, and you feel like you've done a great job for us, and we wish you guys a Merry Christmas. So thank you very much. Shake your hand, but we'll we'll, we'll found it, right? <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Um, and you know, if we could have Mitch come up here, our music man. So there you go, Mitch. So I have give you a card. And uh, again, I just really want to say thank you very much to you and. And, um, you know, for all you've done, I've got to hear you sing probably more than I've ever see, heard this year, too, you know. Cause, um, but, again, a crazy year. But, again, everything you've done for us and the church, and uh, we enjoy having that. And I know, you you know, with your, the group you have with Cripple Creek and everything, and, and we really enjoy having that. And feel like we haven't skipped a beat when it comes to that part of the, of the church and really want to say thank you. So, Merry Christmas. Of a bump, right? <laughs> So, um, and, uh, you know, again, want to say thank you. We have other cards that couldn't be here today, but uh, for the secretary, Jane, and, and, uh, and then Cindy and Audrey that also helped clean up the church, um, the custodial staff, and, and uh, you know, I think that's been very important this year, obviously, with, uh, you know, sanitizing, that sort of thing. Uh, now, obviously, we're at home, but um, when we were able to come in and that sort of thing, it's obviously of most importance this year, and then... Uh, with Jane, I, I, I would say thank you so much, too, because, um, uh, you know, communication this year, especially social, <clears throat> socially and, and uh, you know, communication through email and the newsletter and prayer requests, um, it's been so important this year um, to be able to have that. And, uh, again, we, I think they all stepped up so much this year. And, again, Merry Christmas to all of them and their families. Again, I'll have some cards for them that we'll get to them. So thank you very much, and everybody have a Merry Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherd said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. We light this fourth candle, which is named love, knowing that we are loved by our Savior. We know that we are loved because God gave us his Son and our Savior. Pastor Bob will now open in prayer.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, we do thank you for the season that we are in. Lord, this is the last Sunday of Advent. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we can look forward to another time when you'll come again. Lord, bless our worship service. And Lord, I pray this in your name. Amen. Next Thursday, we're going to have a worship service. Not Wednesday this week, but Thursday this week. It's going to be our Christmas Eve candlelight service. So I encourage you next Thursday to bring a candle with you and worship with us. And you can sing as loud as you want from your home. And I have other good news. The other good news I have is starting January the 9th, we're going to be reopening, but we're going to continue to broadcast online. So that's good news for us. Now I want to, I want to open up with just a small passage from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, the word of God tells us that John the Baptist came into the wilderness. What do you think of when you hear the word wilderness? Do you think of barren wastelands? Wild beasts? Danger? Do you think of the unknown or the unexpected? Or do you think of adventure? Adventure, yes, it's the word I'm going to use today, is adventure. You see, we're in the season of Advent, and a lot of people don't realize that Advent and adventure come from the same root word. But when I say Advent, it just sounds kind of churchy. And if I start talking about Advent, I see eyes glazing over. But to say adventure, and people get on the edge of their seats, Hear the word adventure and they get interested. If you hear the word adventure, images of Indiana Jones comes to mind and Swiss Family Robinson or maybe Captain Kirk and the Starship Enterprise boldly going where no man has ever gone before. Adventure isn't a wake-up call to life. Adventure is a shot of caffeine. You were born to be an adventurer. And we, God's people, are created for adventure. Advent then is about adventuring together in the wilderness. And we have a leader, John the Baptist. He calls out and he says, prepare, be prepared, get ready. Let's go into the wilderness. It's not a place you'd expect to find God, but God is there. God is there in every wilderness, every wilderness that you may have to take an adventure to. But most of us don't like to go into the wilderness. We choose not to go there. We like being safe. We like, like, you know, there seems to be risk when you go out in the wilderness. We don't want to take risk. We like certainty. We want to know what the plan is. We want to know what's ahead of us. There's always an element of surprise when you go into the wilderness. We don't like getting our hands dirty. We don't like being vulnerable or being confused and worn we tell ourselves let's just not go there we don't want to take a risk and what are the wildernesses well some adventures are unavoidable life is full of adventures sickness can be one of them of course we try to avoid sickness which is perfectly okay but what about those times when we can't avoid them I see there's a world of difference between the person who responds to a discouraging diagnosis with nothing but anger and bitterness and the person who faces it as an adventure with courage. Grief can be an adventure. It can be a wilderness. If you're in grief, you're in a wilderness. 
Especially at a time like this, this time of year, we just came through Christmas. This is Christmas time. We're told to be holly and jolly, which tends to make the loss even more bitter. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, a loss of a job, or maybe a loss of a cherished dream. People's hearts ache more at this time of year. When faced with the wilderness of grief, the temptation is to hide, to pretend like it didn't hurt, to not even talk about it, to cover it up with drugs and alcohol or other addictive behavior, or simply to avoid those living situations that cause the memories to come back to mind. And in the process, we're avoiding the adventure. We're avoiding life itself. Adventures embrace the wilderness of grief. They face into it. They force themselves, if necessary, to continue to live. Sure, they fall down. And they have tears. Adventurers learn that if you keep moving, eventually you'll get to where you're going. And along the way, who knows? Maybe just around the next bend, you'll be a surprise. Yet another adventure is sickness and pain of this world that we live in. There too the temptation is to avoid it. I mean, after all, we can't, what can we do as individuals? Adventurers, though, they know that they just do their part. They don't have to worry about the end result because it's not their responsibility. God is in control. So where is your wilderness right now? What adventure are you being called to, but you may be resisting? I can't answer this for you. But I can assure you that you're not alone. Last March, I started an adventure. <laughs> I, I blew my knee out. I had to have surgery on my knee. And within a week of having that surgery, the church was suspended because of the COVID outbreak. Some adventures start out as tragedies <laughs> well that same week i got a phone call from steve Eirich. he asked if we could try to do worship online and here i was my leg sticking straight out i was told i couldn't even bend it for three months and and and, and i was down and out because of my knee i was down and out because we couldn't have church this was an answer to prayer i didn't hesitate i said let's do it and an adventure began. It wasn't easy at first. My wife had to help me get dressed, and she, then she'd wheel me over to the church and up the ramp. It did get easier after a family of the church built us a ramp to use at the parsonage. But things grew. Along the way, along with Steve, we have Dennis Fisher and Mitch Merhanka and Jane Hubner. They're all helping out. We also had people come and sing for us. We had Cripple Creek, Jordan Markham, George Morley, Lance Hinesley, just to mention a few. And praise God, I had Mike Martin and George Morley covering for me. For months, I would put on a dress shirt, a tie, and a jacket. But I had to wear jogging bottoms and shorts. So what they would do is they'd drag a table over in front of me, they'd adjust the camera so nobody could see any of that. Praise God, they didn't see me in my shorts. That was a sight. <laughs> I very much appreciate the efforts of this church. In a way, we were on two adventures. I was on one adventure recovering from my knee, and I was on another adventure as we tried to broadcast to the world. Two things to go through the wilderness in. Well, this is Advent. It's a call to adventure. John the Baptist calls out, get ready, be prepared. And yes, get ready for an adventure in the wilderness. The wilderness is where everything can happen. In fact, anything can happen. Good stuff, bad stuff, even love, and even the presence of God. Are you ready? Well, if you go to an adventure in the wilderness, don't forget to take Jesus with you. And now we have a song. One small child in the land of a thousand, one small dream of a savior tonight, one small hand reaching out to the starlight, one small city of light. 
his mother praising his father see his tiny eyelids fall one small light from the flame of a candle one small light from a city of light one small light from the stars in the endless night one small light from a Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Now I ask you to bless all those who are here and bless all who are watching and bring us back together again. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And I would encourage you to, and I invite you to join us again this coming Thursday for our Christmas Eve candlelight service and bring a candle with you. Now our Lord Jesus himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. Amen.